So alpha beta protein uh, has been a biomarker in liver cancer for some time. Its exact role has been somewhat difficult to define. Uh, it's not a very good screening test in and of itself because only about two thirds of liver cancer make AFP. So if you're using it as a screening test, you'll miss a third of patients. So that's why screening should be imaging based like an ultrasound. And then if you want to add AFP to that, that's acceptable. We know that patients with a high AFP uh, have a worse prognosis than those who don't have a high AFP. And in the context of making treatment decisions, we now have data that suggests that patients with a high AFP benefit from ramucirumab in the second line setting. And this study comes from the, this data comes from the REACH2 study. Uh, this was a follow-up study from the first study of ramucirumab, which took all patients and you remember ramucirumab is a monoclonal antibody to the VEGF receptor. And in the first REACH study for patients who progressed on serafinib, ramucirumab did not improve survival significantly over placebo. Retrospectively, it was identified that patients who had a high AFP did get a benefit, and that led to the REACH2 study. And the REACH2 study uh, looked at uh, ramucirumab versus placebo for patients who had an AFP greater than 400. So patients progressed on serafinib, and if they had an AFP greater than 400, they were in child PUA, they were candidates for the study. And this study uh, read out uh, last year and was a positive study. This study showed that ramucirumab improved survival. Uh, the absolute delta between the placebo arm, median survival of the placebo arm, and the treatment arm was around uh, a month and a half, but the hazard ratio or the risk reduction for death was significant. Uh, it was around 0 0.78, uh, that was more than a 20% decrease in the risk of death with the addition of ramucirumab to best supportive care. And what's interesting about ramucirumab is, again, uh, it doesn't have a high response rate, single agent responses. It does tend to slow progression, and there's a very distinct tail to the curve uh, that there are a number of patients who have long-term survival, and even though that's not captured so well at the median, that if we look at the PFS curve, the progression-free survival curves, or the TTP curves, we see that we're really doubling PFS and TTP, and that's translating into the survival benefit. And as a monoclonal antibody, different from the kinase inhibitors, uh, it's very well tolerated. You know, its toxicity is very much attached to its target, which is the VEGF receptor. So we need to watch for hypertension and you know, proteinuria and some fluid retention. So for patients who have been on kinase inhibitors and are having hand foot syndrome or diarrhea, uh, you know, I think ramucirumab is a very good option to give them a break from some of those side effects, especially if they have uh, a high AFP.